So the very first thing that we want to do um, is we want to start commenting our code. It's always good practice to make comments as you go to remind yourself, you know, as you come back later of what you were doing at that point, you know, kind of explain what the section of code or that particular function um, does so that the next time you or someone else has to go back into the code, uh, it makes it a lot easier to understand what you're trying to do. There's not one set way of doing anything. Uh, there's multiple ways of accomplishing basically every task that you can imagine. So uh, the way that you're coding it might not be, you know, the way that someone else will code it or, you know, as you're learning new techniques, it may not be the way that you're going to code it later on. So if you write some code and, uh, you know, two or three months or six months or a year or two, uh, down the road you come back you want to be able to understand what you were trying to accomplish there you might have learned a new technique that makes it a lot easier and you might you know be able to omit a lot of the code and you know simplify your project if you can just understand what your overall goal was so it's a great idea to comment your code as you go and uh, to do that in Visual Basic uh, you just put a little uh, little quote there I believe that that's a quote um, if not whatever it is you just put one of those and uh, you can just start typing right here so the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna check the user input and make sure it is not empty and to do that we're gonna use an if statement so we're gonna say if and then uh, we're gonna do something a little bit more advanced here uh, I always believe in, you know, catching errors and uh, just trying to make your code as efficient as possible. So one thing that I can think of off the top of my head is that someone's either going to not input anything or they're going to input blank spaces. Maybe they'll have a blank space before or after the text that they put in there. And it's going to kind of throw off the application because essentially what we're going to be doing is they're going to type in their name inside that top block. They hit the go button. And then it's going to say hello, you know, whatever their name is that they typed in. So to kind of you know cut down on uh, what I would you know classify as errors, we're gonna we're gonna handle some of that stuff right off the bat. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna access a uh, a little sub here called strings, and uh, strings are just you know strings of text. It's uh, working with text. So we're gonna say strings dot trim. And uh, what trim is going to do is it's going to take out any empty spaces in the beginning and the end of whatever text is inside of it. So if I did something like that, it's going to return just hello. It's going to take out all of the spaces after, and it'll take out all of the spaces before. So we'll get just hello, which is what we want. If the user types in spaces, we don't want those. So we're going to say if the trim of me because we're declaring here we're working within this form if we imported resources from anything else any other forms or anything if we access their names without you know strictly saying that hey it's the one that's on this form the program could get confused right now we only have one form we're not importing anything from anywhere so it's not really a problem always great practice to uh, you know, since we're working in an object-oriented language, which C# -sharp and Visual Basic are, we want to be as descriptive as possible. So when we're writing these things, um, you know, put in you know the root elements. In this case, it's me indicating the form that we're working on right now. Uh, and dot, it's going to be text box one dot text. So we're saying that if we trim out the the value that they typed into text box one if its length is greater than zero then do something so basically what we said here is that if they put in something if the length of the text that's typed in there after we clear out the spaces in the beginning and the end is more than one or more than zero meaning that something is in that box then let's go ahead and execute some code if not, it's going to go to the end of the if statement, which there's no code. So nothing is going to happen. So we can go ahead and put some uh, functionality in here. Now this just basically, they put in something, and uh, we want to return it. So 
we're going to display to the user our hello message. And how we're going to do that is we are going to say me dot text block one. Remember that's not the one they can type in, that's the one that is going to display to them. So we're going to say text block one dot text equals and then we're going to say hello and me I almost forgot we're going to do the strings dot trim me dot text box one dot text and let's add a little exclamation point there all right so what's going to happen is we're going to output hello and then one blank space Again, we're trimming out the empty spaces that may be in front or after the value that they typed into the text box one and uh, the reason that we're doing that is because let's go ahead and run this and see if we put nothing in there and we hit go if we didn't have our if statement here in the beginning whenever we did that our output on the bottom here would have said hello with an empty space and an exclamation point it would have looked kind of funny let's see actually what that looks like so if we take off we comment out our if statement and we run it again and we hit go it says hello you know nothing hello empty space so let's go ahead and add that back in run it again and uh, our trim statement is really great because if they accidentally hit the space bar one, two, doesn't mean how many times, let's put in John, we'll add some more spaces here. If they do something like that, the output is going to be hello John. It's going to format it the way that we want it, uh, which is going to be really important because you can never count on the users inputting data the way they should. All right, so let's add a little bit more functionality we're going to add two more things to this the first thing that we want to do is make it uh, clear out the current value whenever they uh, click the go button we don't want that existing value to stay there so we're going to come down leave us some room here to make our code legible add another comment and we're going to say clear current value and then to do that all we have to do is me dot text box one dot text I believe there's actually a clear no there's not there may be a clear yeah there's a clear function on here so we're just going to use that an alternate uh, method would be to say dot text equals string dot empty and that would do the same type of thing uh, again, like I said, there's not one set way of doing anything. So let's go ahead and use the clear method since it's already there, it's built in. And uh, let's again fire that up, see if we're getting the desired result. Um, put in a name here, click go, and exactly what we want. Clears out the value. All right, let's go ahead and add something else here. Let's make the uh, text box able to handle the enter key so if they type in something they hit enter it does the same thing as clicking the go button now the code that we're gonna put in for this is not going to be necessarily the best way of handling this type of event but it's gonna be the quickest way um, I'll go ahead and show you the quickest way and then after that uh, you know if, if you want to stick around for the end of the video I'll go back and show you some alternate methods of uh, accomplishing the same thing but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our text block and we're going to go to its key, let's do its key up event. Uh, the key up event has got um, a couple different uh, parameters here. It's got a sender which is going to be the object that you know initiated the request which is going to be text block one and then it's got the E which is going to be the event arguments uh, which is going to be important for what we're doing here. So we're going to add another comment and we're going to say press go button when user hits enter. 
All right, and to do that, we're going to do another if statement. We're going to say if e, because that's our arguments, dot key. So that's going to be the key that the user pressed. Equals, we're going to do key enter. Then, now here we're going to do something a little different. Before, under our button click event, we said then we hit enter. It created another end if statement for us. So we had an if with an end if. And uh, we had our executing code inside the uh, if statement. Since we're only going to be doing one thing here, we're not going to have multiple um, you know, actions happening within here. We're going to do it all in one line, uh, which is always a good practice. If you can shorten your code, um, it's always a good idea. So we're going to add it right after the then statement. So if the key that was pressed equals the enter key, then me dot button one click okay and then we're gonna say sender and e okay so what we did there was we're calling this button one click event so we're telling it that we want to fire this code even though that button one was not really pushed since inside the button one we're not using the sender or the e we can go ahead and pass it the ones that we're using here which is going to be text block one and then you know the key press events um, that's the reason I say that this is not the best method for doing that if inside this we were requiring you know the uh, the event args you know the uh, the arguments the routed event arguments um, you know if we required that in our code we would not be able to call this because we're not going to get the desired output we're going to get the event arguments for the text box key up event and not for the button one click event. Um, you know, like I said, since we're not using those values, this is the quickest method of doing it. And uh, let's go ahead and fire that up and see if that does what we want. So if we type something in here, hit enter. And that is not doing what we want. And let's go ahead and see why text block one key up event. Let's debug it and find out what's happening here. Ah, simple mistake. Great uh, debugging technique. I went ahead and put it under text block one. We need text box one. Simple uh, coding mistake. I won't omit that from the video because that's things that you'll run into whenever you're coding and it's always good to uh, to debug. You'll notice that whenever uh, we did not get the expected uh, output, whenever the program did not behave the way it was supposed to, I went ahead and clicked over here on the side of the screen and it put a little red dot and you know turned uh, the text red. That's putting a breakpoint. That's telling the application in its debugging stage, which is what we're running in right now, that once it reaches this point of code to stop the application and come back here so that we can kind of step through it and see what's happening I knew that that event was not firing because when I debug the application and I put some text here it didn't stop it never made it to this point so we knew that you know hey that text is not firing that's when I looked at my sub and saw hey I'm actually in the wrong place so um, these are great techniques to, uh, you know, to uh, debugging there. All right, so if we put in something, we put in Jim, we hit enter, hello Jim. So we're getting what we want. Um, it's clearing out the value. We're staying, you know, inside of our uh, our text area here, and um, you know, it's it's working the way that uh, that we expected it. Um, let's go a little step further and let's add an icon to this um, so that we don't just have this little little box here um, we're gonna add an icon to not only the form here but to our task um, you know our task location down there as well and uh, just kinda pretty things up a little bit so we're done with the code this is all the code that we need to execute our functionality um, 